It's not going to be out here forever. I won't be. And that's why vampires are so damn nasty. Right? Where'd you get there? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> So I can tell you those stories. I'm the tangent guy. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I love tangents. Where, where'd you come up with that from? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, not the weather or the heat. Thankfully, it was pretty good. Oh, my gosh. I was out walking the dog at 8. You walked the dog at 8 o'clock today? 7. 7.30. You know what I have? It was gorgeous. I have a cat that I've taught to do dog tricks. Walk on a leash, shake my hand, roll no over. Way. I can show you videos afterwards if you're really interested. But it's so cool to come home and the cat's like, can we walk? Nah. He's like, fine. I'm a cat. I don't care. And then if it is nice, we can go out and walk. So like, I There's get all the benefits. There's somebody in our neighborhood who walks his dog on a leash and the cat just follows them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That works. It's, it is nice, except he doesn't pick up the dog poop. I don't appreciate that. 10,000%. And it's like, the people who throw trash outside their car window and then just keep driving, I'm like, what are you doing in this world? Anyway, there's enough oxygen for everybody except for that. I shouldn't even say that on there. Am I on tape? Would you mind if I recorded it? Okay. So, um, what I do is I normally set up this table and go out to parks and ask them if anyone wants to like have a conversation about whatever they want. A lot of times I get religious people and we'll talk about, they'll try to sell me on it or explain why they came into it. And we'll talk about like the foundation of why they believe it. And then when we come back to the, the main topic or we rise up from that foundation, we find that they're a lot less confident in their position from compared, compared to where we started from. And through just a nice little, you know, five minute chat we can have like a, a good transition of critical thinking skills and stuff like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've never had the opportunity to do this with atheists i'm an atheist myself mm -hmm. and that's why i'm thinking let me come over here let's see if i can get some how do i put it interviews with atheists find out where they're coming from that way people theists are watching can understand my proposition if you can interview theists i'm sure you can interview atheists <laughs> <sighs> I have a horror story. Should I not have said that? <laughs> no, because I tried doing it. There's a local meetup group where I'm at that has a bunch of atheists, and I tried it there, and they kicked me out. Like, really? Yeah, because they thought, he's asking, because they're very absolute in that a God did not exist. And I'm like, I, the only thing I, I try to talk about is you should never really be absolute about anything, 0%, 100%. That's like really dangerous places to be because you stop asking questions. You kind of close your mind open. I don't know if a God exists. I'm waiting for evidence to convince me, but I'm not closing myself off from good evidence. I'm just, I think it's more reasonable to say, I don't got the evidence yet, that's why I don't believe, and I'm waiting for better evidence. What do you think about that? Maybe you could talk about my, my perspective. Well, here's the way I look at it. Okay. I don't believe in unicorns. You right? probably heard this sure, theme sure. before. And I don't believe in unicorns, not because I know positively that they don't exist because maybe somewhere there's a unicorn. Maybe somewhere there's a unicorn. But I'm going to not believe in them because there's no evidence for them. So That's I feel I'm comfortable right. saying I don't believe that there's unicorns. Right. That's where Whereas I'm at as well. You, well, no, you're saying you you don't feel comfortable saying that there's no unicorns. You feel comfortable saying that there could be unicorns. Yeah, like, I'm in the same boat as, like, there could be a unicorn. Right. I haven't found evidence for that, so I don't believe in that unicorn. But there could be, and I'm waiting for someone to come to me with good evidence. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just don't feel uncomfortable saying I don't believe in things that... I don't believe it, you know, like, sure, like, sure. there's no evidence for Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I also feel like um, a lot of people are not comfortable God, with the phrase, I the don't know, genocide. with regards to, we're gonna have a of does this up, exist or does it not exist? Mm -hmm. um, the people, well, the I think the, the, the main contention I reached with the other atheists over there was, my position was, between I know it and I don't know it, or I'm sorry, between I I know it exists and I know it doesn't exist, there's a third option, which is I don't know if it exists or doesn't exist. Again, I'm waiting for better evidence. And they're like, no, it's so obvious that it doesn't exist. I'm like, how did you determine that? What's the method that you guys used? To is there anything that you feel comfortable saying for sure that it doesn't exist? To 100% certainty? Yeah. No. I don't, I, I at least, I'm... I'm open to it, but I need to have a uh, immaculate amount of evidence to come to that. that. For me, an absolute claim is so, the other thing that I find so about the first tree 
you know, wrap. So like, I don't need any more evidence. If I said there's a giant dinosaur right over there, right, but you just can't see it, right. I am like 99.99% confident that that doesn't exist. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's where I'm at. But when I say I'm 100%, it means I'm only, I don't even need any more evidence. I don't know, I'm not asking any more questions about it. Women are suffering I don't care even now. what you say anymore. There, there, even if there was a giant right there with Captain Marshall, was I still won't believe it. I've closed a. myself Melvin. off to that. And I don't think that's a good position to be in if I want to demonstrate that I'm a reasonable that makes it all free thinker, 14. in a sense. I'm about, matters, how do I put it? Um, uh, when you're 14, that's awesome. It's tomato, it's tomato, 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 I think. Is it? I, I think, do. think we're calling the same thing different things. She's passionate yeah. about science, uh, quality, call, she different words for the same thing. Yeah, I, I think yeah. some people, well, like you said, Women's don't Day, know Day, what Day, I don't Day, know Day, means. Day, right. Ladies and gentlemen, and Kelly Helton. I feel like there's maybe even another point on that on that scale. My name's Kelly Helton, and I'm the equal rights I'm advocate for the Chi State Free So State. damn sure that it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. If I feel comfortable saying Kentucky. that. Yeah, like my deal is and I'm comfortable enough saying that I'm Kentucky. very confident that the Christian God doesn't exist or that Allah doesn't exist. I don't have the evidence because I don't have a method to demonstrate the supernatural officials. to come to confirmation that 100% confident that the Christian God doesn't exist. Because there's, I don't understand of a way that I can test that. that, that it's reliable enough for me to justify that level of certainty. That's where I'm coming from. Is there anything that you're 100% confident about? Or 0% confident about? I really. There's a lot of things that I'm very skeptical about. Sure, same here, yeah. Um, so, the supernatural in general. Okay, okay. I am not. We can no longer sit back and allow the Christian saying I don't believe in it. Would you, how confident are you that it doesn't exist? Ninety-eight percent. That's pretty good. Yeah. We yeah. That's probably even lower than I am. Yeah. <laughs> <And we must laughs> I'm probably even more confident. Doesn't it? <laughs> but that's a, you know that's a bigger sure concept. I mean, it includes a god. Sure. Show up. But is not restricted to a god. Okay. I think we're on the same level here. Oh, I think so too. Let me throw yeah. something out then. Okay. Just for in front, as an atheist, what's the thing that you are most certain about? And it doesn't that have to be when, the religious That when I die, yeah. I'm dead. Sure. Dead and gone. Yeah. One child left in this world to carry on. <laughs> pretty final. I know. Isn't yeah, that it poetic? Is. Yeah, it is. I did not make it up myself. I said, I do think that, um, I do think that, um, how did I put it? The fact that life is temporary gives life value. And so, like, when I look at, like, sound of flowers and stuff like that, if I was going to have an eternity with those things, mm -hmm. I'd be like, who cares? I can, I can start paying attention to those things 500 years from now. But the fact that it's not going to be out here forever, I won't be. And that's why vampires are so damn nasty. Right? Where'd you get there? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. So I can tell you those stories. I'm the tangent guy. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I love tangents. Where, where'd you come up with that from? <laughs> well, they know they're going to live forever. So yeah, yeah. So that, they do get you know, nasty, don't just, they? They're very nasty people. Very right? true. Right. Like, you can't trust them theoretically, of course. Well, I mean, yeah, you never know, right? I know some people who are mean enough to be basically dead. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Right. But I, yeah, I, and and conversely, you know, a lot of things hey, about religion give people uh, oh. permission to be uh, honestly uh, when the Supreme evil. Court. Uh, mm. Because all they have to do is ask for forgiveness, right? Right, right, right. It's a good ticket to get out of a lot of situations. And if I offend you... And you can do it over and over and over again. Not only that, but if I offend you, I don't even have to make terms to, like, repair that relationship with you. I can just pray to my God and I'm good to go. You know? Yeah, I think, actually, tomorrow's my birthday. Okay, happy birthday, future birthday. And I'm going to be 68. Okay. And I'm having a, a bit of an existential crisis right now. And um, we're Been kind of down in the dumps for quite a while. Okay. And I think it's 
you know, it's that reckoning with the fact that I'm not getting any younger. Sure. I have things left that I want to do, but the main thing that's making me sad about it is not the thought that I'm going to die someday. It's the thought that physically right now I am not able to do the things that I want to do. So um, that part of it, you know, yeah. yet again, there's, you know, like they say, the hopes and prayers or, you know, thoughts and prayers don't help you anyway, so. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of, yeah, I'm say I'm, it doesn't make me believe in God or want to believe in God or believe in life after death or any of those things, and maybe that's why. It's more of a oops, it's more of a more of a thing for me, you know. Can I throw something at you? Yeah. And this might not physically be. though, please. Don't, don't. <laughs> but I'm, I'm in bad like, enough shape. <laughs> the, there's something beautiful in the fact that you're disappointed in the things that you can't do because if you weren't and you're the kind of person who's like all these things I want to do I can't do them who cares you're already dead inside. But the fact that you feel like the remorse that like, man, I'm so motivated. I want to get these things done, but I'm physically unable to do X, Y, Z. I'll have to come up with some other things that I can do. I'm still driven. I still want to do it. And I feel bad for the things that I'm not able to do. That still shows me that there's a person that's alive, that's still living and still has goals. It can make goals and change goals. You're not alive. You're not sad. Exactly. <laughs> What's that? I heard some people say heartbreak is love. That's the saving grace. Yeah. Of of uh, of having a finite lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Because life is, you know, life is... Um, but if you didn't care, who cared? Then it's like, yeah, you're already dead. You might as well just be dead. There's all kinds of yeah. good things and all kinds of bad things that happen to all And you can us. still make good things happen to you in the future. And you don't need a God in order to do that. Exactly. That's good. Cool. Thank you, Kat. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for lending me your umbrella, which keeps falling over. And it, it does? Yeah. Should try tightening and get down? No, it, it, it's... The whole tears. Oh, oh. I was wondering, like, is it working? Yeah.